Hey there friends, Martin here and welcome to the third part of this series where I will quickly introduce you to iClone. Okay, so here we are in iClone and this software is used specifically for making your characters that you created in Character Creator move. So we'll be adding some animation clips onto this character and we will be adjusting those animation clips and then exporting them out of the software and importing them into Blender. The first thing we'll do is have a look at the UI of the software. And yeah, it's pretty similar to what you're used to from Character Creator by now. So again, there is the content library, which as previously is not as user friendly as this smart gallery in my opinion. Therefore, we'll be using that one instead. Also, there's the scene part where you can display everything that's in your scene. So lights, props and sky. And of course, you can turn everything on and off. By the way, if you want your characters to be clearly visible, you can turn on this auxiliary light and it will make the character lit with this flat lighting. So this is good for animation. It's usually better to animate when you can see everything clearly and it doesn't really matter that it doesn't look that good right now. All right, but there is one more very important part that is missing now. And that's our timeline. So let's go ahead and open up this window section here and click timeline, or you can use the keyboard shortcut F3. And this is where everything happens in iClone. This is the most important part of the software. So we'll spend most of the video here. There is also the modify panel where we will be able to modify anything that is currently selected. Let's select our guy here and you can see we have some options. I will explain some of these. But mind you, this will not really be an in-depth introduction to iClone. Uh, this will basically just be a showcase of my workflow, a quick how-to guide, so to speak. Uh, here in iClone, we have content packs as well. Let's click on this animation tab here and again go to something that should be default for all of you, which is this IC7 motion pack. This is filled with animation clips for male and female and some default animations and transitions. These ones with the stylized thumbnails, these are better for games. While these with the images of male and female are somewhat better. They're usually motion captured. And we'll be searching actually in this animation tab here. And there are several categories here. Let's expand the window and... We have this motion plus category. It adds animation as well as speech. Let's try it. So if that is the case, then we would need to take it up with the users and the fans. Okay, that's not what we want. Uh, you get rid of such animation clips by selecting them and simply hitting delete. We'll be using just a simple motion clip with just a body animation, not facial animation just yet. Uh, we'll add that one separately. And in here, let's search for this uh, Mason category, which is this default character. And there is this idle animation and it adds the animation to your timeline. If you now hit spacebar, you can see the character is animating just as we want. And let's expand the timeline again, so we have more space here. But to achieve something more similar to the animation that I had in my original shot, uh, we'll actually take this default animation and we will adjust it a little bit. That is when this modify panel comes in. So what I want at this point is to make him turn a little bit more towards the camera and then turn back to the original position. First, however, we can have a quick look at this modify panel here. This is something like properties window in Blender, so all the modifications happen here. You can, for example, rename your character, but let's leave it as is. Uh, you can also disable or enable foot contact here, because unchecked, it goes through the ground or, well, the invisible barrier here on the ground. And if you check this, the character will respect the floor of the scene and it will not go through it. That's what you usually want to happen unless you have a flying character or a jumping one. And then there is also an author blink action here. You can choose from different presets. Let's have a look at our character. And just as in character creator, with J we can focus on the face. Hit spacebar to play the animation and you can see he's blinking. But to be honest, 
Uh, I don't really like these blinks that are here by default. They look quite unnatural to me. Uh, you can experiment with some different ones like charming blink. Well, let's actually see how that one looks. Uh, okay, so uh, that's very charming. And uh, I like to set this usually to none because I often record my own facial expressions with iClone. Uh, that we will not do in this tutorial. You can get my live streams for that. But for this purpose, we can choose the normal blinking and we can later adjust it in Blender. So that's one important thing. And then there are these menus in here. Uh, let's close all of them and let's have a look at what's important. We have an option to send this character back to character creator to edit it. And then we have this smooth mesh, which allows you to make the mesh more subdivided. Uh, but let's not do that. We can do it more easily in Blender. Then there is various display options. You can make it invisible. You can change the render state of the character if you want, for example, a smoother playback. But usually that's not needed uh, because iClone is a pretty fast software. All right, that's about it for this menu here. Uh, to be honest, I don't really use these options that much. More important stuff is in this the motion menu. There's a lot of tools that you can do with this character, but specifically if you want to modify an existing clip of animation, which is what we're going to do, I like to use this edit motion layer. And you can see we have different parts of the body and we can key all those basically as if we were in Blender and keying with graph editor. For a little bit now we can close this and what we want to do is for him to turn a little bit more at this point in time. Uh, so first add a keyframe here at around frame 290. To actually see the keyframe expand this pull down menu here and you can do it with this button that will store the current position of our character. But then when he goes to this point where he turns a little bit I want him to turn a bit more than he is currently. In this pop-up menu, you can basically take any of these points here corresponding to different bones on our character's body. And when you select them, a transform gizmo appears. With W, you can switch to translate option. With E, you switch to rotate option. Uh, so let's add a keyframe. You can do it just by making a change with the gizmo. So I just rotate this bone and his head too. And it adds this new keyframe here, as you can see. I really like this iClone functionality that you can basically make animation overlays over the existing animation clips instead of messing with the actual animation. If I now delete these new keyframes, everything would go back to how the animation was originally. While looking at the animation, you can of course always decide to push any of your keyframes like this. And another note, you can also select all of the bones directly in the viewport but it sometimes gets tricky. You need several clicks for that. So I usually use this menu. Right here, I'm making just little adjustments to the pose at this point in time. Okay, now we've rotated the head bone like this. And what's also neat is that these bones, uh, when you start rotating them, the other bones respect some rules for how human body moves. So it will not be just that specific bone rotating, but the whole body will follow. So if we scrub through the timeline, we have rotated the character more than it was previously. And then when he turns back, I want him to return to his original pose. Uh, let's add two keyframes now. First one, right before he starts turning back, so that he still keeps the new pose we've made. Uh, just simply select the new keyframe, hit Ctrl C, and then Ctrl V at this point before the turning. Next, make a copy of this original keyframe with Ctrl C. Of course, you can right click and use this menu for it. And go to this point where he turns all the way back. And I want him to return to the previous state. So just paste the original keyframe here. Let's have a look at the result. Yeah, he turned more than previously, looking at the camera and now he turns back. Let's do some more changes, however. For example, I feel like he's leaning a bit to the front. So what we can do is to get here, for example, and then go to edit motion layer again, uh, pick, for example, the neck bone. And for this operation, we can use the translate option. 
By the way, if you hit W once, you will get to the local transform. When you hit it again, it will go to the global transform mode, which allows transformation based on the world coordinates. So in this case, we can use the world transform and push the character a little bit so that he stands a little straighter. And you can see when we do that, there are new keyframes created down here. But we have a problem. He's only straight at this new keyframe we've made. Just delete these four by drag selecting them and then hitting delete. And now he's standing straight the whole time. And one more thing we can do, I have this expression menu here. And if you don't have it, you can always click on these pull down menus here and activate or deactivate different animation layers. So yeah, we want some expression on his face. Let's go back to the animation and IC7 motion pack. And here we have expressions and expression loop, for example. And I think this anger low, for example, will do. And now at least some movement is happening with his eyebrows. So that's better than having nothing at all. Of course, his eyes are dead because they stare straight ahead. We can very simply change that by giving the character something to look at, however. For that, we need to go here to the attribute menu and have a look at this look at menu. Here you can either set for your character to look at the camera all the time, but that's not ideal for us. Instead, we want to give it some specific object to look at. Therefore, let's create a simple sphere, scale it down and place it here. Pick it as a target for him to look at and then you can choose whether you want only the eyes to look there or whether you want him to turn his head as well. Let's do something more towards just the eye rotation. I don't want the animation to change too much. If you want to see your sphere inside of the timeline the same way you see the character, you can just click on this menu here and activate this checker right here. And now you can see you have a timeline for the transforms of the sphere. And now it's just about animating this sphere to be here at this point where he is turned all the way but then here in his original position. After a bit of playing around with the animation, I got this result. In the end, if you want to hide the sphere, you can just do it with this icon in the scene menu. And you can also get rid of the timeline layer for it. For the final changes, we can duplicate the expression animation to fill our whole clip. So just hit Ctrl C, go to this time at the timeline and Ctrl V. There is this overlay option here and it won't be clearly visible with this clip because it's just two identical animations. Uh, but this little tail here is basically the transition between two clips. So if you have different animations, you can make a long transition so they blend together more naturally. Let me actually add more animations here behind this idle one uh, for you to see it better. Uh, so again, go to IC7 motion pack and let's find the Mason category and walk start. Now let's add it in and we can prolong the transition here. And the transition between the clips is pretty smooth now. So this little piece here always controls how long you want your transitions to be. Nevertheless, I won't be using this walk start animation, so I just get rid of it. What we can do too is to cut off this piece of expression at the end. It's not really necessary, but I want to show you how to cut a clip. And that's with this option here called break. So break it and delete this one. And now we have this animation of him just standing there, looking into the camera, some pretty neutral expression on his face, and then looking back. The last thing we can do is to change the animation of the hands. In my final shot, I want the character to be holding a shield and a spear. For that, we of course want to bend the arms. So again, let's go to the edit motion layer and let's find a bone that's responsible. That's this elbow bone here. And just go to the start of the clip with this motion layer and rotate it like this. And this one too. But of course, uh, it returns to the position of the original keyframe. So again, we need to delete some keyframes here. Keys for the arms are here. So select them and hit delete. 
Now we only need to figure out how to bend the fingers. Of course you could go in and start bending them one by one, but there's a super handy thing for gesture here in iClone. Again, I'm using this iClone 7 motion pack and the folder that we're looking for, it's called gestures. Now there is hold folder and let's choose a proper one. I imagine something more loose where a spear would fit inside. Uh, for example, this fist B seems ideal. Uh, go to the start of your timeline and double click it. And yeah, the character's right hand turned into a fist. If you want both hands to be keyframed like this, you go to animation window and apply gesture options. And here you choose this both option. And now both hands turned into fist. However, if you'd be looking for this overlay in here, in the motion layer menu, you would not find it. It's in fact in an extra gesture layer and you can activate it here. And you can see here is our fist B for left hand and right hand at the beginning. You can actually animate your hand gestures with these overlays. For example, if you want him to change the fist pose on the right hand into something different, you can go to the apply gesture options and apply it only to the right hand again, so that only this one is animated. And then uh, if you want his fist to relax a bit at this point in time, you just double click the fist relaxed gesture. And then if you select it, again, you have this option to transition between gestures. But it takes time to make these changes look natural. So I think I will just leave this fist be in here. Anyway, that's how easy it is to change your character's pose and gestures so that he looks like he's holding a spear, for example. At this point, I usually select my character. I hit File, Export, and Export FBX. Uh, here I use 24 FPS, then state the range to export. Uh, you see we have now about 1060 frames, so you can type it in. And what I change here is this merge face hair to one object. That's what I always do because I don't want to have too many objects on this character in Blender when I import it. At this point the moustache and the beard and the various layers of the beard are separate objects. And if you would want to change the facial expressions on this guy in Blender, you would basically have to animate all of them separately, which is not convenient at all. Merging face hair to one object will save you time. Also there is of course this Blender option in the target menu, so don't forget to use that one and then hit export, name your exported character and hit save. Once the process is done, we are ready to take this whole character into Blender where I'll show you how to import it, uh, how I put assets and clothing onto it and some other more advanced tricks. But that we will do in the next part of this series. So hope this was useful and until next time, Martin out. Thank you.